What's going on everyone? This is Jacob Shoop filling in for Tom O'Brien. I'm going to round out the week with you guys. I hope you all had a good day. Quite an interesting move in the market. Obviously a massive counter trend bounce in the dollar up about 0.6% right now trading at 102.51. Tom O'Brien show uh, is produced. Very interesting uh, kind of divergence we're getting in a sense, right? So usually when you have the DXY really moving up pretty heavily, you're going to get some at least some depression uh, in the general equities as well as some of the uh, metals. Obviously, we're off a little bit in the gold right now, off about 0.54%. The composite, we're up 0.9%. Dow Jones Industrial up 0.5%. That E-mini is up 06 as it stands currently. And then the SPY doing about the same, about 06 trading at 50, 571. Wow. And so that makes me a little nervous in some capacity, right? Like, are we just getting kind of an end of the week kind of pump? You know, if you listened to the interviews that I had with Tim Ord this week, and he is a great uh, kind of caller on what happens uh, in, in the markets, he's looking at kind of a sideways movement. And just based on this high movement in the dollar and kind of a divergence with what the equities are doing, excuse me, with what the um, indices are doing, I kind of feel like this isn't maybe going to carry over into next week, right? The data is weird too. The dollar's obviously coming up. You had honestly pretty strong services activity, expanding payroll expands pretty immensely. If I can get the exact numbers for you. Um, I mean, it's, give me a second if I can get this up here. Yeah, September US job reports, 254,000 rise in payroll. And that is extremely high considering what people were expecting, right? So the unemployment rate ticked down to 4.1% in September from 4.2%. Uh, economists had forecast the economy would add only 140,000 jobs versus the 254,000 that was added, um, which would have been a little change from the originally reported increase in August. So then, the kind of review on all of this is people are saying, well, yeah, of course the market's going a lot stronger, right? It's You get this kind of stability and it increases this likelihood of a soft landing. But I, I don't know if it, if it necessarily does, right? You have this insane basis, you know, point cut, 0.5, right? Or excuse me, 50 basis points um, on some fear that the job market was going to kind of disintegrate a little bit. And then it comes back and it's way stronger. I mean, we still exist in something where inflation might not be totally done. And then you enter into a really sketchy situation where you've cut things by 50 basis points and you kind of just had, you know, maybe uh, two months of, of decent numbers where the Fed said, hey, you know, maybe we can start cutting here or they were concerned a little bit about the jobs. I mean, that is extraordinarily strong, right? I think... You know, you can say that there's some stability coming in, right? At least people know now what's going on in the sense that the Fed's not going to cut rates uh, as quickly as maybe was anticipated. Uh, you can kind of anticipate, say, maybe you're not going to get another 50 basis points. I don't see why you would by the end of the year, unless obviously some really, really bad data came out, uh, kind of the downside or suggesting that you could get um, some pretty strong, you know, basically strong recessionary pressures, right? Which you're not seeing at all. Um, I still think the biggest fear we have in this market is that things rally up uh, way more than, than I think the Fed anticipates. And so it remains to be seen what's going on. But I think this upward movement is kind of just like, hey, you know, job data is great. We were afraid that it wasn't going to be very good. And that obviously is uh, recessionary in some concept. And of course, as we spoke about sometimes prior, it's, uh, you know, it's a lot harder to get job numbers back up once you've you know, annihilated them through really tight uh, financial policy or fiscal policy. So it means we see what happens, but I, I know someone in the den was like, it's kind of hard to stay, you know, long over the weekend. And I, I, I kind of agree with that. You know, I don't see necessarily this as a phenomenal thing on the long term, because I think we still deal with some of these inflationary pressures. Uh, so it remains to be seen, but you're looking at, um, the services activity that expanded the fastest pace since early 2023. I mean, this is still a hot economy. U.S. service providers expanded in September at the fastest pace since 2023 in February, driven by a flurry of orders and stronger business activity. The ISM index of services advanced 3.4 to about 54.9 last month. Readings above 50 indicate expansion. Of course, we're talking about that with manufacturers. They're a little bit below. 
that, I think around 47, but we'll talk about that in a moment. And the latest figure exceeded all projections in the Bloomberg survey of economists. Uh, the group's new orders gauge jumped from 6.4 points, the most since the start of 2023, combined with a four-month high in a measure of business activity, which parallels the ISM's factory output gauge. Uh, the data suggests the economy was on solid footing at the end of the third quarter. Pickup and demand growth also helped to fuel an acceleration in prices paid for materials and services. The index of cost paid rose to 59.4. At the same time, there are more signs of companies are pulling back on hiring. The ISM gauge of services employment fell to 48.1 from 50.2. Again, some kind of voodoo stuff, I think, that's happening. Uh, you got a lot of different conflicting uh, pieces of data here. In the manufacturing is a weak spot in the strong U.S. jobs data. The U.S. has lost 34,000 manufacturing jobs in the past two months. That's according to the BLS. Employment now stands at two-year low in a sector that has been struggling from weak demand, high interest rates, and uncertainty about the presidential election that has hindered capital spending. I don't blame them. And manufacturers, they shed 7,000 jobs in September. Um, they represent a fraction of the total non-farm payroll, about 8% today compared with almost a third in the 1950. People say some of the numbers might be bottoming out, but, but whatever. That's where we're standing. Let's see what else we have going on. Uh, crude oil really getting pretty strong up here, up about 1.23% again, uh, trading at 74.61. Of course, the Brent crude is up at 78.23. And again, this is kind of, I guess, I guess apparently what happened is there was some information that the U.S. and the Israelis were actively observing some of the oil outflow in, in Iran and the Iranians moved some of their tankers away and tried to hide them. That becomes a significant issue for Iran. I remember, well, I don't remember because I wasn't alive, uh, but a few decades ago, um, the Iranians and the Americans had were arguing about something and it went somewhat hot where they ended up blowing up, the Americans ended up blowing up some of the infrastructure that Iran had, right? Um, it's, it's very exposed. And so if there's any target you want to hit that doesn't have a lot of human casualties but really hurts people, it's going to be that infrastructure that Iran has on its coastline, and there's not much they can really do about it. And uh, this runs into some issues, at least with global supply and then prices going up. Folks, uh, we'll be right back.